One of the best things you can do to improve the sound of your band and to improve your experience playing on stage with your band is to use in-ears. Now, I've talked a lot uh, before about why you should use in-ears, the benefits, and what you need to make that happen. I've included links in the description of this video to some of those videos. But I realized the other day, if you've never stood on stage and worn in-ears, you don't know what's being heard in the band's in-ears. If you've sat in an audience before and seen a band on stage uh, and seen them wear in-ears and you're kind of going, I wonder what they're listening to. Uh, maybe you want to use in-ears with your band. Maybe you're a sound engineer who's mixed in-ears before, but never actually worn them on stage. So what I thought we would do is I found three videos. We're just going to listen to bits and pieces of this. Three videos on YouTube of people's in-ear mixes that they've either shared personally or from some famous musicians. This first one is really cool. And I wanted to listen to it and what kind of break down what we're hearing there and what they have in their inner mix and what I like and what I don't like. And, um, and, and hopefully this will make sense to you uh, as, as to what most people do with their in-ears. Okay, so this first one up is, is pretty cool. Um, this is the Edges in-ear mix, and this is the song Magnificent, the U2 song. Um, so let's press play, let's listen. Uh, and again, I'm gonna kind of comment on this as we go, but here we go. Edge, and where are we two, going? One, two, three, okay. four. So you hear Edge's guitar. You hear the shaker. One, the shaker is basically two, taking the place one, two, of a uh, click track four. for them. Drums are coming in. We hear some track stuff there. Yeah, I'm sitting Edge, here, Bono two, singing. Three, here's four. here's the interesting thing. Um, it's a beautiful guitar playing at the edge. If you hear the vocal, I'll stop it just for a second. If you hear the the vocal, um, I'm listening with in ears, so put headphones on if you if you haven't yet. Uh, you hear someone saying "Edge one two three four. and I believe that's probably Terry, their playback tech, doing that, um, or whoever's serving as their playback tech. Um, uh, that's that's counting people in and using guide cues with in ears is super helpful. Um, uh, you know, in the church world, we talk about this a lot, and people say, "Oh, the musicians can't remember their songs." Well, freaking U two is like doing this, and they're like the biggest of the biggest rock band. But it's because they're playing, what, however long of a concert, hours and hours long of a concert, lots and lots of different songs. They don't want to rent and f fill out an entire stadium with, um, you know, that costs hundreds and thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars to do uh, for them to get on stage and forget the song. So you'll hear someone saying, Edge, counting into parts, counting into song sections. And that's the playback tag, kind of serving as guide cues. Okay, so let's listen here. Bass. There you go, bass. So bass starts here. And that's super helpful to let them know when each part comes in and we hear some backing tracks coming. We hear counting. Um, what's interesting to me about this is um, they don't have a like typical click sound. So you almost hear the shaker, like you almost lose the shaker as the band's playing. Um, but they have enough tracks that they're probably okay with that. I prefer to just have click going straight down the middle. All right, let's listen for our key. Interesting. Maybe I missed it. I didn't hear a key into the verse. Um, but I think a couple things, a couple things to point out there that are interesting to me. One, the edges, uh, or at least the band, and I don't know if they each have their own. Uh, I know they each have their own individual in ear mix. I don't know if they each have their own click sound. Um, but what's interesting to me is the fact they're not using a click sound. Now, I mean, you're you too, so you can do whatever the heck you want to, but I still think it's beneficial and helpful to have a, a actual click sound that cuts through that everyone can hear a little better. But again, they're, they're following along with each other. They have a playback tech that's managing stuff. So if they get off, they can get back on tracks. Um, but what's interesting w with me about that to me about that is there's no quote unquote click metronome sound. It's just a shaker. Um, you do hear all the tracks in there. Um, uh, you hear a good blend of all the instruments. So if you've never used in-ears before, essentially you're hearing the other people's uh, instruments as well too, uh, which is great. And then the vocal cues, which I think is super helpful um, to know where they're going, to, to know, okay, bass is coming in, drums are coming in and kind of keep track of the songs, which is cool. So that's a really helpful thing. Okay, our next one here, uh, this is Corey Wong's inner mix playing along with Ben Rector. Uh, this is Minneapolis, October 23rd, 2016, so it's kind of old. This is his inner mix, but I thought this was, uh, this was super cool, and it's great that he posted this. Let's check this out. Okay, so this is like their intro thing. Probably a tour manager, someone stepped on stage and pressed play on Ableton to start their, their track going into it. So Four, probably... Three, two, one. 
So this is interesting. You hear a count off. The lights are starting to come up. That tells them when to walk out on stage. They've kind of timed this out. Practice it probably. Everybody's getting into place. Let's listen for those guy cues. There's no click yet. Okay, drummer's sitting down now. Let's see if he triggers anything and they just go right into it. So at this point, no one's playing. Filter's opening, so they're probably getting close. One. Okay, two, so there's our click. One. There's two, our guy three, key. Four. We've got piano. So what's interesting to me with this is um, click is definitely pretty loud in his mix, as I would expect it to be. Uh, it's a uh, we hear two, accents, three. which I think is super important. There's our vocals. We'll let it run to the rest of the band comes in here in a second. I think what's interesting in the beginning to, to note particularly is they had to count in even to when they should walk on stage because um, I'm sure those lights are programmed or at least in time with the LD. Um, they have the count in to start. They have a count in here. Like there's the next section. Um, they're not necessarily saying verse, chorus, but they're hearing those count ins to remind and keep them in time. Again, if you think about it, you're filling out an entire stadium or, in this sense, a club. Um, you don't want to show up and screw it up because you forgot when to come in. So why not use guy cues, right? Okay, let's hear kind of everyone come in. Okay, lights are out. I bet they'll get a guy cue counting back into them starting. One, two, yeah, three, there we go. Four. Yeah, so... That was super, super cool because I, I want to mention something. Um, you know, often we talk about click. We talk about uh, uh, click in the context of using tracks. And we talk about maybe a guide key or whatever. And people go, oh, I don't want to use it because it, it feels restrictive. It takes away blah, blah, blah. This is a group of incredible musicians. And because they had click and they ha are playing to a click, playing with a click, and because they have guide cues, they're able to drop the lights out there. And as opposed to just playing the song like it is on the record and go on or whatever, they're able to drop out to make this really thematic moment. And if you've ever been to a concert live show before and you've gone, man, how do these musicians just like know exactly where to go at the right time? How do they know when to come back in? They all came back in together. And I want to I want to go back to that for a second. OK, um, and point a couple things out. All right. So let's turn this up a little bit to where we can hear. So first, Ben is playing piano at this moment. Okay, lights go out. Now listen, the drummer never counts them back in. If they're not using click, the drummer's going to have to two, three, bring them back in. And he switches to guitar. One, two, three, four. And then they're right in, right? And then Ben's on acoustic guitar. So what's so cool about that is they're using click. They're using guides. I, you know, they have a little bit of track in there, like some synth stuff, some some pad stuff. But they're not using that to to fake it. You know, a lot, so many times people say, um, "Oh, you know, if I'm using uh, click and tracks on stage, I'm I'm you know I'm not a real musician or whatever. Real musicians don't use clicks and tracks. We've talked about that before uh, on behind the space bar and kind of jokingly made fun of that. But what I love in this example is they're 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 not using necessarily tracks to create an emotion to create a vibe they're just using click and guide cues and they're using their tracks to help them uh using uh their their guide cue and their click to kind of help them navigate that which is super cool okay so let's wrap up with something a little different we may jump around here uh this is from uh from worship tutorials they have a, a fantastic youtube channel in fact they're holy crap eight hundred and twenty one thousand subscribers they're almost at a million subscribers so congrats to them on that uh that's that's unbelievable but uh they've got some really good content particularly tutorials for worship leaders and stuff uh but in this one they are this is from november 10th 2020 so it's fairly recent a couple years old um they're saying what the band hears during worship with an md music director uh this is a song called battle belongs in your mix so this is a church context but uh even if that's not your vibe that's not your thing uh this is super helpful to see okay so let's just have this so, so we definitely hear more of a click. Okay, so this guy's speaking here. All right, so he's going to talk for a second. You hear the music director. He's kind of guiding them. They have click keeping them in time. Um, and then you hear some notes about like, okay, I want you to go to this chord. And then they're going to change, right? So that's kind of nice. That's a great way, particularly in a 
church context or you're introducing a song or something, even if it's not a church, do you have an MD that's kind of guiding you through stuff, which is cool. Um, whereas with Ben Rector, uh, what we just listened to, and with um, the U2, uh, that was pre-recorded. This very much could be pre-recorded here as well, too. But in this case, their MD is, uh, is saying this live in the moment, which is kind of helpful. Okay, so let's... Let's get to the song. Okay, so they're getting into the song. So what's interesting, you see him playing acoustic. You don't hear a lot of acoustic in the mix. That's one of the keys to creating a good mix. If, if acoustic is an essential, then cut that out, right? Really uh, pushing that click a little bit. Not on top of things, but that's fine. So this must be the guitar player's mix because guitar is super loud. You hear no acoustic, which it's not that there's anything against the acoustic player. It's just you can only have so much room and space so you're cutting. Let's bring this up a little so y'all can hear a little better. I don't hear tons of pads. Two, three, four. Yeah, a lot of guitar. Drums are kind of barely there. I wish in particular for me, when I create intermixes as a guitar player, I typically bring um, drums up so that I can really play with drums, but you can hear drums are kind of low in the mix. These are pre-recorded guy keys. Let's listen to vocals for a second. Hey, I know. Marcella, let's go see Marcella there. Um, so uh, what you hear there, there's one, two, three, four, five, I think six people potentially singing. Um, oops, jump to the beginning there. I don't need to show Brian. But um, all the vocals are not just like full blast 100%. It's tricky in a, particularly in like a worship leading thing, if you have different worship leaders um, uh, leading at the same time, uh, or different worship leaders are going to lead different songs throughout the the night. If you're working with an artist, I mean, this is pretty straightforward because you've got like Bono is the only guy that's going to lead the song, lead the song. That's a church guy speaking, sing the song. Um, you, you know, the edge isn't going to suddenly take over and sing a song. You need to hear tons of, of his vocals. So, um, I don't think the inner mix on that is great, but it shows you an example of with a lot of singers, you've got to kind of mix and match what, what you're hearing there. Right. Um, you, you want to make sure you don't have tons and tons of vocals. Um, you know, you have yourself, you have plenty of click. I think that's super important when it comes to an inner mix. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time on the channel here talking about tips for creating a great inner mix and how to do that quickly the gear you need, all sorts of those things. Uh, but to catch all of that, you've got to do me a favor. you got to hit subscribe. Um, I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central, uh, Monday through Sunday, whether it's on tracks, whether it's a podcast, whether it's on gear, creating sound design, creating great sounds, um, whatever it is, it, it goes live 10 a.m. Central. To make sure you see that, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we go live. I don't want you to miss out on anything. Um, and we're going to continue talking about in-ears, continue talking about using tracks, performing on stage with Ableton Live. But I hope this uh, video was beneficial to give you an idea of what people are hearing. And hopefully some of the commentary helps to understand, um, you know, uh, some of the things that make sense. Maybe you should have this type of click versus that type of click. What should be in your mix versus what shouldn't. But thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hope to see you uh, tomorrow. If I don't see you then, I'll see you the next day, 10 a.m. Central in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.